Hi team, hi team, hi team. If you're new here, my name's Russell. I'm 38 years old and I've recently quit my job to pursue some exciting life goals. One of those life goals is to see how good I can be as a cyclist if I train like a professional cyclist. Follow along and see what happens to my body as I start to increase my training load. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey. Welcome back everyone. Um, this is our first day back on an indoor trainer after Mallorca. And I guess those that are new to us as cyclists, new to the channel, other than riding outside in foreign countries like Mallorca and France and stuff, we tend to do most of our training indoors, which could turn out to be one of the biggest challenges for increasing training load at zone two. But on the other hand, it also might be one of the easiest ways to remain consistent. Outdoor riding can be quite intermittent with brakes, downhill, junction cars and stuff like that. Whereas indoors, it's pretty much relentless, relentless consistent pedaling for the good and the bad. Um, Since coming back to the UK, one of my biggest objectives is trying to find what my zone two is. Now, there are a number of ways to try and estimate what your zone two is. Um, most of the time, we'll do a FTP test and we'll do this ramp test that will test our VO2 max, we'll, and from that we can extrapolate down like a percentage of. Um, another way to do it is just do a functional threshold power test, like 20 plus minutes um, to try and estimate what your zone two is. Another way of doing it is via your heart rate, 220 minus your age, and then do a percentage of that. All of these systems are pretty flawed in some way, i.e. they're kind of testing like a maximum threshold point and then trying to extrapolate down and to try and estimate this zone two power. Um, other ways of doing it are more like biological markers, doing lactate threshold tests and taking your LT1. Um, and this is the point at which your body is unable to process the lactate that it's building and you'll start to see this sort of gradual incline in your lactate levels as you build power. Um, that's something that I am very interested in doing, but it's not something that I have available to me at the moment. And another way of doing it is taking fat oxidization and glucose oxidization levels um, during a VO2 max ramp test. Um, and again, something I'm very interested in doing, but I don't have those metrics at the moment. So I'm left having to try and gauge where I am using one of the other methods. Um, but something that else is that you can use is the torque test. Um, during zone two, you should have elevated breathing, but you should be able to hold a conversation with somebody. Um, and that that person should know that you're exercising in the fact that you're getting out of breath, um, you're not being able to complete full sentences without breathing heavily, um, but you should still be able to hold a coherent conversation with them. So what I'm going to be doing is riding at my zone two power based on my FTP, which is somewhere between 177 watts and 241 watts, um, which is quite a large uh, range. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to define that a lot better. Um, I know that when I'm riding outside and that Katie and I, whilst we were in Mallorca, we rode a lot of zone two um, for sort of two, three hours. And 
it became, becomes quite apparent what that kind of feels like then. And outdoors, it was about 220, 225 watts. Um, since riding indoors, um, I found that it's probably more like 110. So it's sort of like 10 watts lower. Um, so I'm gonna aim for about 210 watts, I think, going forward. What I was hoping to do was take my power outdoors in ratio to my heart rate and try and compare that to indoors. But I never really wore a heart rate monitor up until now. I've really been very much based on power. Um, but when we did a ride out in Mallorca, I wore my heart rate monitor, my Apple Watch, um, and monitored my heart rate during some long sort of zone two efforts. And it was coming out at about 135 beats per minute. When I came to test this indoors, what I found was my power was about 10 watts lower for the same beats per minute on my heart rate, which is very characteristic of riding indoors. Um, there's not as great a cooling effect. So the body has to work a little bit harder in order to maintain body temperature. And that usually manifests itself in a higher heart rate. So I'm not surprised at that at all. Um, and I guess the question I have for myself, which I'd like to try and understand and get a better answer for is, am I better off riding indoors at 135 watt, uh, 135 beats per minute at 100, 210 watts, or go outdoors and get that extra 10 watts of power? Does that manifest better adaptation than riding indoors for the same beats per minute? Um, so yeah. That's a tough question to ask, maybe. Maybe someone knows the answer somewhere. If you do, pop it in the comments section. I'd love to hear. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna try and reach out to some coaches and try and get a better understanding of what their experience is with this. Since coming back and doing a few zone two sessions indoors, something I have noticed is uh, something called aerobic decoupling um, and this is where over time your for a consistent power output your heart rate starts to go up um, and for me this is happening at about 1.5 hours um, and then for a three hour ride it just consistently goes up um, the first workout that I noticed this in was a three hour ride um, 225 watts and I knew it was kind of like pushing the upper limit of my zone two um, and I kind of wondered whether it was just maybe I was working a little bit too hard um, I've done a little bit of research and it appears as though there could be some relation to fueling there could be some relation to dehydration um, or it could be a lack of aerobic endurance so the next session that I did, another three hour session, I dropped the power to 210. I made sure I fueled with a bottle every hour um, and I also included electrolytes in there just to make sure that I was remaining as hydrated as I could do. Um, I added 60 grams of carbs an hour, so it was a relatively good sort of fueling strategy for a zone two. Um, and what I noticed was the exact same thing happened. An hour and a half, heart rate started to get elevated. Um, so what I'm putting this down to at the moment is a lack of aerobic endurance. Um, and the theory behind this is you have your type one and your type two muscle fibers, your slow twitch and your fast twitch. Now, aerobic endurance is reliant upon your slow twitch muscle fibers and these predominantly burn fat as a fuel source um, and it does not require as much oxygen your type 2 your fast twitch muscle fibers uh, burn glycogen as a fuel source and this requires oxygen and the theory is that your type 1 slow twitch muscle fibers start to fatigue and once they fatigue, they start to then draw upon the type two muscle fibers, the fast twitch ones, in order to 
maintain the same power output. And at this point, they start to demand more oxygen, your breathing starts to get more labored, and your heart rate starts to become elevated. And I think this is what happened to me at about one and a half hours. And I guess this is what benefit I start to see from doing this zone two training. Um, and hopefully what I'll see is a improvement in my aerobic endurance. So watch this space. I'll certainly be keeping an eye on that one. Um, and it's gonna be really interesting to see how that sort of manifests itself in my performance and my training. Um, one thing that I did notice over the last few years of racing, you know, one and a half hours into a two hour race and I'm really starting to like hit my limits. And I'm wondering whether it was just my aerobic endurance. You see, going back like three years now, I, maybe four years, I went from a body weight of about 70, 73 kilos up to 80, 83 kilos. And I put on 10 kilos of muscle by doing strength training. And what I think's happened is I've increased my muscle mass significantly with the fast twitch muscle fibers and not necessarily converted them into type one muscle fibers to help with endurance exercise. So those two things tend to align and I'm pretty certain that I've kind of like pinpointed what that problem is. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, this little introduction back into indoor training following Mallorca. Um, next week is my first full week of indoor training at 15 hours for the week. Um, so tune in again next week. Let's see how I get on with, with 15 hours of indoor training. Um, I'm looking to do a couple of trials with some supplements that I've always wanted to do. Um, so yeah, we'll be able to do a direct comparison for exactly the same power, exactly the same duration and see how the body behaves with it, how I feel, what happens to my heart rate and that sort of thing. So join in, watch this space, make sure you like and subscribe and I will catch you next week. Peace.